Okay, so this mother walks into the room and she catches her son kissing and making out with another boy, another man, whatever. Anyway, without further ado, give me your take. I'll come back with my commentary because this dude here, he's trying to figure it out. He's like, can somebody leave comments? Help me understand. What would you do as a parent, as a mom, who walk in and catch your son engaging with another man? Let's take a look. <clears throat> Cut the cable with Fios help so bad that they killed him and put his body Hold on a in a barrel and threw Fios helmet. Okay, another flip. Okay, I mean mother flips <clears throat> after catching her son kissing another man. Mom flips out. Oh god, here we go. Oh shit, what I know what I fucking suggested. I know what I fucking saw. Oh. Mom. No. No. No, no, I saw. No, no, God. No, Jesus. No. Now, in today's age, you ain't got no control over your child preferences. They putting it all in your favorite movie. Even Ken in the Barbie movie was a little bit LBCT. They put it all in your favorite TV shows. Most of the popular characters are LBCT. Even when the ball players are not playing at their fully expected potential, they going to trans mode so people can stop putting pressure on them, forcing them to play hard. It has become a common thing to want to be LBCT. So I got a question for you as a parent. If you got kids, I want to know. And if you are LBCT and you follow me, I want you to comment below on these questions I got. If you was raised in a household with a mother and a father, how do you handle accepting your kids changing their preferred partner? How do you handle their preference? They preference that you might stand against because you ain't never been right. You don't understand this new way, this new generation. How do you not change your unconditional love for your child when your child showing signs that they may end up liking the same organs of somebody that they got? They want to be an LBCT. How you don't change in that situation? I want to know because I got kids. How do you explain the birds and the bees when these kids just see two bees? How do you explain that it's supposed to be Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. See, there are people that's really LBCT because they come from a troubled childhood. They was fondled with as a child of parents being something to them. And I understand those people and I have deep warm regards for them. But there are those people that's turning LBCT because it seems like the popular thing to do and they want to feel like they're accepted, respected, and most of them just want some goddamn attention. How do you think Magic Johnson handled the fact that his son is big enough to play center for the Lakers or offensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys, but is still to follow in his father's footsteps and becoming a national star, a national sensation? He want to play dress up and housewife. How do you think Magic Johnson genuinely accepts Eli preference? Or do you think he had just come to terms and compromise with today's agenda? As a parent, what would you do in this situation? I want to know. Then I mean no disrespect to the LBCTs that's really that, if that's what you choose to be. But I want to know as a parent or as an LBCT, what made you go that way? I got questions because I'm raising kids and preferably if I had to choose my kids preference is going to be man and a woman. But if they want to go that route, I have no control. And I want to know as a parent, if you're raising the LBCT, how you deal with that? I'm just coming to you, man to man or man to woman, if y'all still believe that. I want to know how you accept that. How do you go about loving your child unconditionally when they showing you that they ain't coming up the way you raised them? I just want to know. Y'all comment below. I know if we're building that man. I want to know what's going on. Y'all comment below. Hold on. 
if y'all still believe that. I want to know how you accept that. How do you go about loving your child unconditionally when they showing you that they ain't coming up the way you raised them? I just want to know. Y'all comment below because I see they starting to come out with the male can breastfeed a child. You understand me? I know ain't no gift for building that man. I want to know what's going on. Y'all comment below and let me know. I could be wrong. I could be misled. But teach me something I'm willing to learn. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. What would you do? Y'all make sure y'all like this video. Well, I have family members who are a part of the LGBT community or whatever, but not even the part of the, but who are gay, you know, and, and, and what, what I do is I love I love them anyway. I love them unconditionally. I know God's law, you know. I um. I I let me put it to you like this: just because you have a certain something that you're dealing with or that you're battling, it don't mean that you have to act on it. Let me let me give you an, a, a, an illustration. Some people feel that it is cruel to expect this of people who did not choose to be homosexuals. When it comes to God's law, but few people would disagree that even though sometimes anger and aggression is rooted in a person's genetic makeup, right? They just naturally just, they have a bad temper. They, they, they just blow up. Still, those people have to work hard to control those tendencies, right? After all is said and done. Jehovah God and Jesus, they're not going to destroy us for making mistakes or for slipping up. What he focuses on and what they focus on is the practicing of screwing up. We all fall, fall short. You're going to have good days and you're going to have uh, days that are more challenging. What's important is that you don't give up for those who are battling this. The great news for this generation is you have a lot of people and it's true. Check it out on um, YouTube who, because they're on their spiritual journey, they have chosen to be celibate. You know, I um, also think about those in the Bible. Let's think about the apostles. They maybe had one or two that were married. All the rest of the apostles were single. Maybe they were battling homosexuality, ten homosexuality tendencies. We don't know. Remember how the Bible said Paul, he had a thorn in his flesh and he asked God to remove it. And God said he's not removing that because it, it, it can be used to bring glory to God to show how you could work through things because of this thorn that you have in your flesh. And also, like I said, the apostle Paul, he speaks about the gift of singleness. The apostle described the value of living contently with singleness or rather than marriage look at first corinthians chapter 7 verse 7 and then let's think about anna in the bible she was left at the altar she left at the altar with seemingly little to contribute to society look at luke chapter 2 verse 36 through 38 she was a uh, single martha okay look at luke chapter 10 verse 38 through 42 she illustrates that single adults <laughs> can easily allow themselves to be busy working for the Lord. Maybe God chose people who are gay to be single like the apostles because God wants to use you for his own purposes. You know, let's think about Jeremiah. He was also single. And he was able to serve productively and face loneliness because he recognized that's what the Lord wanted for him. And I'm sure he wasn't lonely. He had friends and family and out in the ministry and Bible studies he was conducting and people who loved him. And what about Joseph? What about Joseph? If anyone understood impulses and temptation, it was Joseph. You remember how that uh, woman was trying to go after Joseph because he was gorgeous. Genesis, read Genesis chapter 37 through chapter 50. He was single. Nehemiah, okay? Read the book of Nehemiah. He remained faithful to the Lord and his people regardless of his sexual urges, his um, immense adversity that he had to go through. And then we have John the Baptist. Read John chapter three, verse 22 through 30. 
Matthew chapter 14, verse 1 through 12. I'm sure he had battling. These are healthy men. They were closer to perfection than we are today. I can imagine how <clears throat> sexually healthy and, 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 and aroused they used to get. He was a follower of Jesus Christ. He abandoned the world. No matter what the sacrifice, John the Baptist, he had to do what he had to do. And then we have Mary of Bethany. She has a special place in the scriptures. Jesus, she loved Jesus and even washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. And we also have Jesus Christ. I know he was perfect, but he still, he was a perfect man. So I'm sure his sexual parts was hello. But he had a love for his heavenly father so much more. So he, you know, there's a lot of people who are on their spiritual journey. And if, if celibacy is the, the life that is there for you, opposed to offending your heavenly father, it is what it is. We all have our cross and we have our torture stake to carry. And what is that torture stake or that cross that you have to bear? It's fighting to do what's right. That's the torture stake that we all have to carry. You know, it's it's not easy. And I know a lot of people, they compare homosexuality with pedophiles. You know, a pedophile usually discuss most people. Most people are disgusted by pedophiles as much as some people are disgusted by homosexuality. You know, um, uh, you have some people who are, who are like that. I don't personally feel that way because when you think about all the estrogen they putting in the water and all the crazy food and all the, some kids have been raped and, and molested and all of this stuff that's going on in the schools, who, who's not confused? A lot of people, you know, but, um, you know, um, I did some research here. It says many people compare homosexuality with pedophiles. A pedophile usually disgusts most people as much as homosexuality disgusts mentally healthy and straight people. Let's say that a pedophile doesn't act on his urges. Like they're a pedophile, they just love children. He just has this strong desire for children. And just because he has that strong desire, he feels that he was born that way. He can use that same excuse when it comes to homosexual practices. I've heard a lot of gay people say, I didn't choose this. The pedophile can say the same thing. They didn't choose to be pedophiles. Every reason the homosexual uses, the pedophiles can do the same thing. At the desire level, it's basically the same thing. It's kind of perverted. It, it not kind of, I'm trying to be nice here. It's perverted. Just because you have urges, it doesn't mean that you have to act on them. I have the urge sometimes <laughs> to be a, 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 how you say, a vigilante. I have to calm down. I have to pray not to be a vigilante and handle stuff, really. But we all have our cross to bear, you know? A lot of homosexuals come out of the closet because they say they got tired of living a lie. The pedophile can say being with someone their own age is living a lie because they really have an urge for children. It may upset gay people when they are compared to pedophiles, but they are not, if, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. The same reason pedophiles should never act on their urges. Homosexuals shouldn't act on theirs either. They have to pray to God about all of this. Is it easy? No. Will they fall and trip sometimes? They will. It happens, you know. They are the same playing field as the pedophile when they say, this is the way God made me. That's what homosexuals say. Homosexuals want to be comfortable and not, not have to hide their desires. And that's the same way pedophiles feel. You know? So-called homosexuals explain their sexual attractions. And the pedophile could explain their sexual attractions as well. It's sad that we have to go to these extremes of using pedophiles as a comparison, but our society has gotten so far from the morals of the Bible or having any morals at all. And it's affecting our children. It's all in the schools. It's all in the cartoons. People are trying to make it seem like being a part of the LBGTQ uh, 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 um, <clears throat> people, it's cool. We as a society, we have to become so accustomed to dysfunction 
that we have called pig slop dinner. <laughs> Whatever. We are not here to judge homosexuals. Jesus knows I'm not. I have gay people in my family very close that I love with everything that I am. So God knows I'm not here to judge. We are here just to defend the truth of God's word. And we have to do what Jesus tells us to do. We have to. And is it easy? No. Just like a pedophile, it's not easy. Just like somebody who have anger issues, they have to control that. They can't act on it. You just can't. <clears throat> you know, um, first they get you to accept gayness. That's what they get us to say. To ex they shove it down everybody's throat, and they are. They're getting everybody to accept it. Once you do that, then they get you to accept transgenders. After that, bestiality and pedophilia is right behind. Some people keep saying homosexuality is morally okay. But let's say a father having sex with his son because they both love each other. Is that not wrong? How is that wrong if they are both adults that are consenting? What's the difference in terms of morality? Homosexuality between two men is no different than a father and his son having sex as long as they are both adults and they both consent. There's absolutely no difference. <clears throat> According to studies and research and <clears throat> data, there's definitely a connection between homosexuality and pedophilia and the fact that people try to disconnect the two shows how far people have come from not having morals. This is what they, they're, they're, they're observing. You cannot separate the two because they are two sides of the same damn coin. Just because a person feels like they were born with certain feelings, it doesn't make it right. And the Bible can never, ever, it's true, be outdated. And what the thing is, is God is our creator, our designer, our manufacturer. And anytime someone is the manufacturer or the creator of something, they know how best it works, what's best for it, what's not good for it, what's going to cause it to malfunction, what's going to mess it up. So considering God has his rules set on how we're supposed to live, you know, it is what it is, sweetheart. And when you look at the scriptures at Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Leviticus 18.22, you shall not lie with a male as you would lie with a woman. It's an abomination. We can't argue against the one who created us and designed us. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, that's fornicators or adulterers, so they're just as guilty, so they can't really judge nobody gay. If you come in fornication, land it with somebody you're not married to, hello. Neither sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. Now you notice it said who practice. It don't might slip up. It may, don't make a practice out of it. Just don't. Please. Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with other men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. It's right there, cut and dry. And as much as I love my family members who are struggling with this, you, I, I'm there for you, you know, and um, I'm praying for you. Is it hard? Yeah, I know it is. At the same time, you have a lot of people who have decided to just remain celibate and become like one of the apostles and become like one of the people who I just mentioned here. And they're just doing that. They take care of themselves sexually. You know, that's what you have to do. I'm sure you, you'll be forgiven for that. That's not an abomination because I take care of myself sexually. I'm not married, but I still have those desires. I have the rabbit and I have the rose. 
Yes, I do, honey. I handle my business. You know? But anyway, my heart goes out to those who are struggling with this because <clears throat> I know it's rough. Like I said, I have family members who are battling that. On, 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 they're battling that every day. And they love Jehovah, love Jesus Christ. And so far, they're doing very well with, you know, going without. But it's a battle. And we all have our battles. We all have our our uh, struggles. Our, our um, yeah, you know, it, it's a struggle. Especially for those whose love language is physical touch. That's a hard one for you. Anyway, I love you. Jesus loves you. Jehovah loves you too. Just make sure that before, you know, you you don't know whether you're going to get hit by a bus or car, whatever. You got to be get yourself together before you make your transition. Because when you have to stand before Jehovah and Jesus Christ on Judgment Day, you have to stand correctly. So get it together. Go on your spiritual journey. Celibacy is the way. Get yourself some toys. Whatever. It is what it is, baby. I love you. So does Jehovah and Jesus Christ. How would Jesus treat people who are struggling with homosexuality or gayness? And the same way Jesus would treat them, that's the way we are supposed to treat them. And when it comes to your children, do not throw your children away out there to that gate. Don't do it. Satan is waiting, baby. Crystal meth is waiting for them. Crack, heroin, drugs, pills. Don't throw away your gay children, honey. Don't do that. Please don't do that. You try to be there to support them, talk to them. Don't lecture them. Don't lecture them. Please don't lecture them. Just be there to love them. And maybe, you know, celibacy may be the way to go. Show them a couple of toys, whatever. <laughs> I love you, darlings. Bye-bye.